let us talk about a thing which uh, residents see most of you would have read marfan syndrome some of you would not have read marfan syndrome in your residency of 3 years because we don't frequently get patients of marfan syndrome but uh, the differential diagnosis of marfan syndrome unless you have actual case in the ward you are not going to read about it and examiners also know particularly central institute super specialty examiners they do ask questions related to differential diagnosis of marfan syndrome so uh, instead of trying to make it bloated i'll be to the point but discuss key points of all the feet syndromes which are similar to marfan syndrome and can produce diagnostic dilemma so first category are the ectopia lentis syndromes these are the syndromes in which ectopia lentis will be present so first is your familial ectopia lentis it is not a genetic condition there are many theories many genetic loci which have been defined there is isolated ectopia lentis these may or may not have a marfanoid habitus that is a marfanoid morphology of systemic features second ectopia lentis syndrome is homocysteine urea homocysteine urea is a inborn error of metabolism there is deficiency of cysta theonine beta synthase which leads to elevated levels of both homocysteine as well as methionine in the body these patients develop ectopia lentis they are also found to have a marfanoid habitus that is they will have a uh, tall stature they will have thin habitus thin body features and they will also have arachnodactyly like features what are the different things these are the things which differentiate ectopia lentis in homocysteine urea from marfan syndrome marfan syndrome patients have a normal iq these children will have developmental delay marfan syndrome does not have increased risk of atherosclerosis or embolism they will have increased risk of thromboembolism as well as coronary artery disease it is a risk factor for atherosclerosis and acute mi as well as stroke syndrome so that is different in case of homocysteine urea then third ectopia lentis syndrome is wheel marchesani syndrome in this syndrome uh, there are three types which have been described type 1 is due to adam ts 10 mutation type 2 is the one which tends to uh, mimic marfan syndrome mostly it is fbn gene mutation and type 3 is due to lt bp2 gene mutations in wheel marchesani syndrome there will be ectopia lentis with myopia with microspherophakia additional findings which rule out marfan syndrome are short stature marfan syndrome has a tall stature and they will also have brachydactyly that is short digits marfan syndrome has thin slender long digits so these are the things which help to rule out wheel marchesani syndrome so as per the modified gent criteria in the absence of a family history of uh, marfan syndrome if aortic root z score is less than 2 and systemic score is equal to or more than 5 with at least one skeletal feature but no ectopia lentis you should think of likely possibility as mass phenotype right third are the aortic aneurysm syndromes aortic aneurysm syndromes may or may not have marfanoid like morphological features but they will all have aortic aneurysm aortic dissection and uh, management of these aortic aneurysm and dissection will be very similar to what you do in marfan syndrome so the first aortic aneurysm syndrome is loes diet syndrome also called as ld syndrome loes diet syndrome is a syndrome in which the skeletal and craniofacial features are very similar to marfan syndrome right it comprises a classic triad of three things first is tortuous arteries and aneurysm tendency so the arteries are extensively tortu tortuous and the large vessels have a tendency to undergo aneurysm formation which includes mainly aortic aneurysm secondly there is increased gap between the two eyes the so called hypertelorism and third feature is cleft palate which may or may not be associated with bifid uvula so aortic dissection in these patients occurs at a earlier age and at lesser dimensions compared to marfan syndrome so aggressive therapy needs to be given in patients of loes diet syndrome what are the types of loes diet syndrome there are originally there were two types which were defined now we know that there are five sub types with some points that you need to remember first variety is the type 1 type 1 lds will show TGFBR1 gene mutation TGF stands for transforming growth factor B stands for beta R stands for receptor so TGF beta receptor ke do part hote hain you have TGF beta alpha 1 chain and you have type 2 chain if type 1 chain is affected 
the protein coding the gene coding for that protein is affected that is called as tgfr b tgfbr1 gene mutation it produces type 1 lds type 2 will have tgf beta receptor 2 that is chain 2 gene mutation both type 1 and type 2 are further divided into 1a and 1b 2a and 2b depending upon presence or absence of craniofacial features right third category is type 3 Type 3 will be SMAD3 gene mutation. If you remember the photograph I had shown you in pathogenesis, SMAD3 is involved in the intracellular signal pathway within the cell. So, if there is gene mutation in that, it will produce Lois Deed syndrome plus additional findings will be early onset osteoarthritis and supraventricular arrhythmia, especially supraventricular tachycardia. Then we have type 4 in which not the receptor but the ligand itself. I told you in the beginning. TGF is of TGF beta is of three types TGF beta 1, 2, and 3. Here TGF beta 2 banta nahi hai. TGF beta 2 ligand. Ligand is the thing which will act on receptor. That beta 2 ligand is missing or it is abnormal. That it will produce type 4 variety of LDS. And then we have type 5 where TGF beta 3 ligand will undergo mutation. This type 5 is found to be a milder form. There is no arterial tortuosity and less aortic dissection is seen in type 5. Management of Lois Deed syndrome basically comprises management similar to Marfan syndrome. But in the management of aortic valve disease, aortic root valve disease, you need to be more aggressive and as soon as you make the diagnosis, intensive 3 to 6 monthly echocardiography needs to be done and elective aortic valve root repair is needed in virtually all of these patients. Right? Then we have the second aortic aneurysm syndrome called as Schrepinzen Goldberg syndrome. There will be skeletal features, serious features, and craniofacial features similar to MFS and LDS. But additional findings will include developmental delay and hypotonia, which are not seen in Marfan syndrome. The gene mutated is SKI gene, which encodes for an intracellular repressor of TGF beta signal. So, if this gene is mutated, the repressor protein will not form and TGF beta signaling will increase. It shows less vascular involvement than either MFS and LDS. So, aortic wall, uh, it is, you know, Marfan syndrome is in the middle. LDS, more aggressive therapy, early aggressive therapy. In uh, schrepinzen goldsberg syndrome, late and only if it is severe aortic root involvement, then only you can go for surgery. So, it is, uh, the cardiovascular involvement is relatively milder in these patients. Then we have... Uh, the third variety called as familial thoracic aortic aneurysm syndrome. It is an autosomal dominant condition. There is a high risk of aortic root aneurysm and dissection. They may or may not have marfanoid habitus. Systemic features of MFS are usually absent. Other than habitus, the other in internal features and the vertebral anomalies etc. are usually found to be absent. It is managed similar to as you manage Marfan syndrome. There is an important thing that you need to remember. There was an old MCQ. Uh, when I was a student at that time, there, it was not exactly a MCQ, it was more of a thing which uh, we, I, I still have vivid recall that there was a quiz and in that quiz they had asked about which of the varieties of uh, Ehlers-Danlos syndrome tends to mimic Marfan syndrome clinically. So, I, at that time I did not know the answer but today I know the answer and it is Gideon and Nelson also that Ehlers-Danlos syndrome type 4 very rarely can mimic Marfan syndrome. So, EDS type 4 as well as bicuspid aortic wall with aortic aneurysm may also sometimes mimic Marfan syndrome. And finally, uh, although it is not considered to be a mimic, but there is a thing called as MVP syndrome, mitral wall prolapse syndrome, which is not associated with uh, Marfan syndrome. There is a Ghent criteria for that also. So, Ghent criteria says as per the modified Ghent criteria, in the absence of a family history of Marfan syndrome, if the patient is having MVP and aortic root Z-score is less than 2, it is not significantly dilated and systemic score is less than 5 and there is no ectopia calentis, right? Everything has been ruled out. The likely diagnosis in these patients will be MVP syndrome, that is mitral valve prolapse syndrome.